Hi everyone, this is Neil Barnhill with the Barnhill Golf Institute, helping you find your winning way. This is the third edition of our Golf Weekly News Show called The Drive. We're going to talk about an array of topics in the world of golf, from last week's tournament to the Ryder Cup standings, golf equipment review, and I'm also excited to bring you a new segment in this episode called Rants and Raves. All right, let's dive right in there and let's talk about what happened at last week's Dell Technologies Tournament where the field got cut down to 70, advancing to this week's BMW Championship. We have Bryson DeChambeau winning again, second week in a row. Sixth player in history to do that in the FedEx Tournament Playoff Series. So congratulations to him. He was on quite a roll and even if he doesn't play this week, which he will, he is going to be the number one seed going into East Lake, so he's going to be a tough guy to beat the way he's playing. Rounding out, we got number two Dustin Johnson in the standings. Number three Justin Rose. Four Tony Finau. Five Justin Thomas. Six Brooks Kepka. Seven Bubba Watson. Eight Cameron Smith. Nine Phil Mickelson. Number ten. Jason Day. Everybody had a good tournament except for Jason Day. He happened to miss the cut this past weekend, but he's still playing well. Uh, looks like Cameron Smith is trending in the right direction. I thought he was going to win that tournament. I had a few hiccups on the back nine, but it's two weeks in a row where he's had a third place finish. Tony Finau, I thought he might win this week. He had another solid performance, tied for fourth. Justin Rose came in second. Dustin Johnson tied for seventh. Bubba Watson also top for 7th, Phil Mickelson top for 12th, he shot a 63 on Monday, Labor Day, so that was incredible. Good plan, he is trending in the right direction after his positive talk we talked about last week. So this week it is at the, the BMW Championship in Philadelphia, it's at a great course designed by Donald Ross, it's got some great holes, it should be a very exciting tournament, so it's going to be field's going to be cut down from 70 to 30 after this, so what a great time to be a fan to watch this. It's really getting exciting. Also, yesterday, we had three more Ryder Cup picks by Captain Jim Furyk. Had no surprise, Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, and Bryson DeChambeau. So, that is no surprise at all. We have one more pick out there, and it looks like it's between Tony Finau and Matt Kuchar. Either one's going to be good. My pick, personally, I think Tony Finau probably is playing better, and it's totally up to Jim Furyk to do that. Either way, it's going to be a great pick. We're going to have a great team. The European team's going to be great. It's going to make for a great Ryder Cup. Also, I want to give a big shout out to a local guy to Central Florida from Winter Garden, Florida, Ernie. Hernandez for winning the Masters Long World Drive competition last night. He hit one 377 yards to win it and it was all carry, it was wet conditions, there was absolutely no roll so congratulations to him, quite a feat. And if you haven't watched that, it is interesting to watch these guys and what they do at their craft. They, they dedicate themselves totally to what they're doing, their workout regimen, their dedication to to keeping their bodies in that kind of shape to be able to hit the ball that far is, is absolutely incredible. So again, congratulations to Ernie and a great job there. All right, this week, rants and raves. We're gonna start out with a rant. Um, I'm a PGA member, I coach juniors, I watch junior golf, I coach teams. So I am noticing from some of the junior tournaments I've been in, some etiquette issues that I wanna address and that is one is cell phones i've noticed there's some kids out there with cell phones they're on their cell phones when they shouldn't be on them in particular last week in a tournament i was watching one group and the kid was looking for his ball and in the same group other kid was sitting down on his click gear seat on his cell phone playing a video game while the other kid was looking for his ball i went and helped him look for his ball but are you kidding me? That, that can't happen. That is not the right etiquette and uh, we need to work on that. I have some solutions coming up here in some of my raves so I'll, I'll, I'll address that. Other thing with the etiquette is uh, I would say our ready golf, our sportsmanship, 
I noticed in another tournament, a couple people walking off the green, 50, 75 yards off the green while two others are still putting. That should not happen. First person in should put the flag stick in. There are other ways to address have, doing ready golf, which is having the cart, your click gear, or your bag in line with the other hole. That this should not happen. That's just, in my opinion, just rude. It's not good etiquette, and we're going to talk about how maybe some solutions for that as well. Um, also, the last thing with my rant is when kids are playing, especially younger playing with older, is just the proper etiquette of not walking 100, 150 yards ahead of the person about to hit. That just shouldn't happen. I know you're trying to be faster. But that is just rude, it's, it's not safe, it's not what we should do. So my rave, I'm gonna move on before I get too hot about this subject, but I, I wanna have some solutions. I'm just gonna complain about some. I have some solutions to what we can do to address that. My rave is about the PGA, PGA Junior Leagues. I think the PGA is doing a fabulous job with this. The PGA members have been doing this for five years. It has grown every year. We have an 80% retention rate of kids coming back the following year to play. So that shows you the success of this program and how much fun these kids are having in the PGA Junior League. Okay, so as a, as a coach, I'm starting one too, a PGA Junior League this January. I'm excited about it. I can't wait. And what I can do to address some of those etiquette issues as a PGA member and as a coach is to go over these etiquette things to our junior golfers. You know, make sure they know that there's 40 seconds to play when it's their turn to play. Be ready to play when it's their turn. Also, where to put their bag when they're on the green to go to the next hole so they're not walking backwards 50 to 75 to 100 yards and then turning around having to walk back. I'm seeing that more than not. It is very surprising to me. So I want to address it by teaching my junior golfers to do that. Um, what I love about the, the PJ Junior League is, I mean, the kids come into it. These are usually some of the kids that haven't played tournament golf and they're just getting going with the game and they're very excited about it. So they're going to learn the rules of golf. They're going to learn the etiquette of the game, like we just talked about, the competitiveness of the game. And the tournaments they play in, I believe, is six tournaments. You know, it's a two man scramble type format where they compete every three holes and they play nine holes to get a team shirt with a number. The, camaraderie with teammates, the friendship they form. I think everything's positive about this. So I think we can, as PJ members, I think we can do a good job as far as like addressing some of this ready golf, etiquette, sportsmanship, humbleness, all the things that we as PJ members should do, we can do this with this program. So I'm very excited about that. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about equipment review now. And this is a great club. I personally got it three and a half months ago, and my plant partners are in all. They want to get one because it, what a great sandwich. I'm talking about the Mac Daddy 4 by Callaway. They have 21 loft bounce, different combinations. And I'm going to talk about their Groove In, Groove Technology. They're 52 degree and below, feature a 20D groove for consistent spin on fuller shots. They're 54 degree and above have 5D groove for maximum control out of rough and around the green. Four sole grinds to pick from. It's just a great club. I've never hit one this good. It's hard to believe it is legal as much as it spins. But man, it has a great feel. When you find that right bounce around the green, it does out of the rough. I have noticed personally, it does stop. It just has a great feel to it. The weight of it's incredible. And it's got two different finishes, the platinum and it's got the black matte finish. So either both of them look good, so it just depends on depends on your preference for which look you like. It's one of the best sand wedges I've had. I used to have uh, snake eyes back in the day when I out of college and man I love that club and I've always been a Cleveland fan. I've done the Vokey wedges, but boy this is this is one of the best sand wedges I've ever played. So I challenge you to go look at it in the store, try it out, uh, get fit for it because there are the different bounce 
and grind options with it depending on your type swing. So you're gonna wanna get fit for them. Don't just go buy one. There's a 10 degree bounce, 12 degree bounce, diff four different types of grind and depending on if you're more shallow, more steep, your type of swing plane. So take the time to do the club fit with it. That way you'll benefit from the maximum uh, of what you should do with getting the right club. Okay? So, a lot of great information. Next week, we're gonna, we'll see who wins, if it's Bryson DeChambeau or if it's going to be somebody different. It's going to be exciting to see who the last pick is for the Ryder Cup, and we'll have another edition of Rants and Raves and another equipment review. Till then, I got some interesting blogs, some vlogs. Check out barnhillgolf.com. <laughs>